Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Shift, Tidbits of Wisdom for Everyday Service. I'm Ron Edwards. I'm a Master Sommelier. I'm your host. Uh, as we go through this series, and it continues on every other week, we all end up with other people on with us to discuss things. But today, it's just me. Just me talking about the first 30 seconds, how incredibly relevant and poignant it is that you understand the purpose and all of the ins and outs that are happening at that first 30 seconds of your interaction with a guest. And you can apply this broadly in the hospitality vein to um, your the front desk clerk at a hotel, you're the um, host or hostess at a restaurant uh, front door. It's still the same sort of thing. Now this particular conversation, we're gonna be talking about your frontline service employee, uh, either your server, your sommelier at the table, uh, where the guest has already been seated, but you can apply these principles more broadly. I'm joined by TJ Griffin in the background. He's my second in command here at Winebow. I'm the director of education, and he's going to help me with the Q&A. So if you have a question, pop it into the Q&A, which should be in your menu bar, and we'll do our best to answer it along the way. It's a very fast 15 minutes, but a 15 minutes well worth the time, I certainly hope. Um, so um, given a couple of seconds for everybody to join, Let a little bit of advertisement for this week and next week. Next week, the uh, topic is the adventure of wine by the glass. Uh, and we're going to cover a lot of the thoughts and principles and, and how to work with your wine by the glass system uh, and, and hopefully help you feel more comfortable with what it's really about and, uh, and be more um, efficient with it inside your uh, businesses that we hope are still open and, and if not, as they reopen. Uh, so, all right, let's get started. I'm going to use some visual aids here in a little bit. I'll talk about an actual menu of a client I used to have and, and how that plays into it. But we, we spend a, a lot of time as trainers in the hospitality industry talking about those first impressions you have with your guests and how important they are. And But I haven't always heard the connection put from the idea of it's so important to get there fast. It's so important to be present at the table quickly and that sort of thing connected to the end result, the cause and effect kind of relationship that you're dealing with. Um, and it is important I have found through the course of time to do that. But, you know, sometimes I think it's important that if you're going to listen to somebody, if you're going to take what they have to say for any kind of seriousness, you should know a little bit about them. And if you didn't read the bio, um, when I posted the invitation, I spent from 19, um, from 1989 to 2005, I was a part-time or a full-time employee in a restaurant the entire time, either starting as a server while I was in college and then moving from server to manager, uh, manager sommelier to general manager sommelier. And then, um, Actually, in 2005, I left full-time restaurant work and went into restaurant consulting as well as, well, actually just consulting in general. It involved both the restaurant world, hotel world, as and imports and a bunch of other things. And so you're basically looking at, you know, 1989 to 2017, I was involved in one form or another with helping people in hospitality. And along the way, I made a lot of mistakes. I got a lot of good advice from other people, and I learned a lot from my mistakes and, and while I was helping other people learn to do their job better. So that's where all of this conversation comes from. So you can decide from that whether you feel like you can trust me at all. Hopefully you do. All right, so those first 30 seconds are there to do some very specific things. They're there to set the tone, how this evening's going to go. They're actually, whether you realize it or not, the guest will have decided before you leave that first 30 seconds at the table, whether they can trust you or not. And trust is so important in the environment where you want to establish hospitality. Uh, they're gonna decide on their budget. They had a budget in mind when they came out to your restaurant and it was based on the restaurant they're attending and the occasion of their, of their evening and their own personal taste. And so if their budget was you know, $100 for two people, and you don't establish trust, their budget may not be $100 for two people anymore. It may have shrunk. If you approach them, you've gained trust, you've set the right tone, and you become an advocate for them, that $100 budget might get stretched. Maybe it's 110 now, maybe it's 120. 
but definitely they're going to stay within a, a close range of what they decided they want to spend. Otherwise, they leave feeling like, wow, that was really great. I had a great time, but we can't come back here as often as I would have liked. So the other thing that's happened in here is who is in charge? So every guest walking in and sitting down at a table really wants to feel like they're in charge in some ways, but what they really want is for somebody else to be in charge and make them feel really good about it. And then that first 30 seconds, you get to establish a, a possibility of you being in charge of their evening because of the things we've listed so far. So the components of the first 30 seconds are timing, persona, the appearance and demeanor of the person be, uh, that, that is coming to the table, the purpose of being at the table. So the purpose is to show up with a plan, visually assess the guest. You need to talk, you need to be looking for what mood are they in? What attire are they wearing? That could be an indication of the style of the evening or the kind of people they are, not, not judging them for their um, uh, financial backing by what they're wearing, but rather the style of the person. You know, one of my favorite wine purchasers throughout the years, I, I think he came to the restaurant almost every time in a pair of Bermuda shorts and a golf shirt, but he's, he single-handedly kept me in wine business for years. Body language. Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they, do they look like they have an intimate moment going on? Do they look like they're kind of standoffish with each other? All of these things are important to realize. And then meet them where they are. This is something that Madeline Trafon taught me, um, beat into my head over and over again, because it's such a truth. You have to meet your guests where they are. You can't even expect them to come one inch to where you are because they're the guest. And so make sure you're trying to meet them where they are. And then finally, that purpose of showing up to the table and that purpose of the first 30 seconds is to invite them into a great guided experience. And you're gonna be the guide. So let's break down each component of these first 30 seconds. Um, if you're having questions, make sure you use the Q&A bar. Uh, TJ put in a note is that every week or every other week, uh, the, po the podcast is bi-weekly. So it's every other week. So our next our next uh, adventure wine by the glass is going to be not next Wednesday, but the one after that. And I'll be sending out an invite to everyone that registered as well as the same methods we had to get the word out this first time. So timing. So important, and, and any good restaurant trainer has said this to their person in, that they're training every time about how quickly you need to get in touch with your guests. And it really boils down to this, 15 seconds feels like 30 seconds to the guest when they're sitting there wondering if they're going to get acknowledged. And they're okay with that. 30 seconds feels like two minutes. They start to look around. They're exploring the restaurant a little bit. Maybe they're getting a little antsy. At one minute with nobody dealing with them, nobody talking to them, that feels like five minutes. And now they're starting to wonder because we've all had that moment when we sat down in a restaurant and the hostess talked to the server. Maybe they didn't, there's a, a miscommunication, somebody's busy and they still, they just forgot about you. They, they never found you. They didn't get the evening started. Destroyed trust before it could ever get going. In five minutes, oh man, let's hope five minutes doesn't happen because that feels like 15. The, this, me, this idea of, you know, Time passes differently on each side of this equation. You're a server or a sommelier, you're busy, you've got lots of things going on, and so 30 seconds passes like that in your life. But in 30 seconds in the guest, when they're wondering if they're gonna be acknowledged and what this evening's gonna be about, and they get a little anxious, that's a different story. So part of your first 30 seconds is actually getting there in the first 30 seconds. Now, a quick acknowledgement will often take care of this, issue without getting into like the whole, let me take an order. You know, you're, you're nearby. It's not the first thing you can do right then, but you can, you can walk by and say, good evening. I'm be right back to take care of you. Good evening. So glad you're here. I'll be with you in just a moment, but we don't want to stop by the table with full hands. And this is sort of an empty hand greeting. Um, not that you have nothing to offer, but that you're not walking by with hands full of dishes where you just cleared another table. You could make eye contact in that way with someone at the table and kind of nod at them or let them know that you've seen them, but you wouldn't want to stop and talk to a guest while you have dirty dishes in your hand from somewhere else. Uh, that just doesn't feel right to them and it doesn't look clean on your behalf because that's part of your persona. And the persona is a huge importance of this aspect, persona. That's everything you're emitting to them. 
uh, it's not just your physical appearance. It's also what you're giving to them emotionally and, and the vibe you're putting out. And so your appearance without any doubt has to be neat, clean, and orderly. The, um, the, the reality is if you sit down, like I travel on planes a fair amount, not right now, but uh, normally I do. And if I sit down in the seat and the seat itself is dirty or the back of the tray table that pops down is dirty, then I just assume the plane hasn't been clean and uh, that I should get out my sanitizing wipe if I have one. If you show up to a table wrinkled, um, it, your apron is stained, your hands don't look clean, your fingernails aren't trimmed, any of that kind of stuff, it says to the guest, uh, this whole restaurant isn't clean. And most assuredly, my server isn't clean because if the management here will allow my server to come to the table or my sommelier to come to the table with uh, disheveled, and not looking right, then they are not paying attention to details of other places. It sort of falls into that old idea of uh, Van Halen once upon a time in their um, uh, contracts with venues required that they had bowls of M&Ms with no red, I think it's no red M&Ms. It was one of the colors had to be eliminated from the bowls of M&Ms. And it really wasn't because they hated that color M&M. It was because if that one detail was taken care of, they were pretty sure all the other stuff that was a major had already been done. And that was just a, a factor of trust for them. We have the same opportunity when we deal with our guests in that first 30 seconds. So make sure that you press your shirts, make sure that your uniform or lack of uniform, a lot of restaurants have moved to sort of a, a vibe, right? It's like, but you make sure you fit into the vibe and that you're not a disheveled vibe. But rather, if it's black t-shirts and jeans, that's fine. Don't wear a faded, gross black t-shirt. Wear a, a good black t-shirt. And don't wear ripped up jeans. Wear jeans that you'd be proud to wear um, in regardless of the situation. Um, so stay in context with your business. I've been a few places that where the clothing was sort of like what they might wear on the street. And you really couldn't tell the difference between the bus person and the wait staff and the manager and just everybody worked together. And that's fine but make sure you're neat, clean, and orderly. Hygiene is just a non-negotiable. I know there's lots of people that have their own personal views of what hygiene means, et cetera, in the hospitality industry. Hygiene is about what the guest thinks, not about what you think. And the guest doesn't want to smell your perfume. And the guest doesn't want to smell your cologne. Um, this is a tough one because a lot of people like their cologne and perfume, but it doesn't belong in the dining room. Uh, body odor is completely out of the question. So um, that particular choice in hygiene just has to has to live inside the world of hospitality where it's about the other person and not about you. For those of you who smoke, I, I'm not condemning you for smoking, but you shouldn't smoke in your uniform or the clothes you're wearing at work. Uh, the main reason for that is you carry it into the dining room with you. And as soon as you get near your table, they know exactly what you've been doing over the last 15 minutes. And when they smell it, it's not so much that it's so offensive about the smell. It says that among your priorities, you're going to leave at some point and smoke and come back and they wonder if that means they're going to lack service during that time. And keep mints on hand. If you're like me, you know, breath can be an issue sometimes. So keep those mints around. And when you're feeling a little cotton mouth or you're wondering, pop that mint in to make sure that uh, there's nothing in between you and the guest to cause any kind of offense. All right. So that's great. That's the, the basics. That's like 101, right? The next one is demeanor. And this is a little different. This takes a little practice, especially as you start to work in the world of um, how uh, detailed it is. And so uh, this is where you need to be even paced. It's so important that you not come harried and hurried up to the table. The other is that you need to be calm outwardly. I know that on the inside, we're all going like, ah, I'm so busy, I'm four tables down. Uh, yeah, but in the, on the outside, it's calm and it's evenly spaced caring. The easiest way to show that guests that you care about them is to very simply look them in the eye and smile. Um, listen to them. That's the other way. So looking them in the eye and listening to what they have to say and what they're interested in is huge. All right. So this is where the, the you need to stay with an open body language, but be, be professional. So we're not, we're not leaning on people's chairs. We're not we're not touching our guests, um, shaking hands is one thing, but like patting them on the back and stuff, that's very, you have to be very careful. You got to establish some trust first before you would uh, ever have physical contact with one of your guests. But the next is showing up with a plan. All right. So here's where the 30 seconds is you go from 
someone who brings stuff to the table and takes it away to someone who becomes a guide. And the first rule of thumb is have a plan. So take a peek here at this screen that I'm gonna share with you. Uh, this was a, a menu from a restaurant in Northern Michigan that I dearly loved and had a fun time consulting with and I worked on the floor there. If you'll notice over here, this part of the menu was immediately available when you sat down, it opened up to you. And there was a purpose for that because there's a purpose to the first 30 seconds. And one of the purposes is to get something ordered and not necessarily to tell them everything you offer, but to get something ordered. How do you want me to settle down? Put a glass of champagne in my hand and I'm, I'm comfortable. I'll wait 30 minutes to place my dinner order once you give me a glass of champagne. So the, the point of this menu is very clear. If you look over here, it is this is your first 30 seconds. This is where we want to get people. An aperitif, a discussion. For me, my first 30 seconds was to establish rapport and sell them a glass of sparkling wine. Because I think that everybody's happier when they have a glass of sparkling wine. It makes Thursday feel like Saturday. It makes Saturday feel like an event. It makes an event feel like a life celebration. So why not celebrate every day? And I don't understand how we in America have relegated sparkling wine into a special occasion only thing, but it's not a special occasion only thing. It's a I'm breathing thing. So as you can see in this restaurant, we had three different offerings by the glass. You wanna get serious about selling sparkling wine? Get serious about selling sparkling wine, have more of it, including one definitive uh, champagne. So for me, I'm introducing the restaurant to people. I'm, I'm just getting straight to the point. Welcome, you're here. I'm so glad you're here. This is it's so great to have you in the restaurant. Let me show you where we begin our meals here. Uh, as you can see, we have our wines by the glass. If it were me, I would be starting with a glass of sparkling wine, specifically the Baron Fuente Rosé Champagne. I love it. I think you'll love it too. Where would you like to begin? That sets a tone. I'm here to guide you. I'm going to give you choices. And in the end, you're up to de the decisions up to you. No yes or no questions. That's so important. No, yes or no questions. All right, so while, you, while I'm doing this with the table, while I'm talking this through, and while I'm being a little bit pushy to some people, I'm watching their reaction. Do they seem interested? Does, does one person at the table, I go, ooh, champagne, that sounds good, where's that? The other people are like, no, no, champagne, no, I don't like sparkling wine, it gives me a headache or bad memory from a wedding or whatever, and I point them and I take that reaction to a, the next guiding step. If you're not interested in sparkling wine or champagne, we have lots of wines by the glass. Great way to get started. Let you settle in while we figure out what we're going to have to eat, as well as our wine for the rest of the evening. And now we're on this thing. And so in the process, all of that's happening. And what I'm asking myself is, while I'm talking to them, do they look uncomfortable? Do I need to be a kinder, more gentle, um, softer guide? Do, do they look excited and happy? I get to start becoming a party planner then. Awesome, these people are ready to play. I'm ready to guide them through the evening. They're not making any eye contact at all and they're not engaged, okay? Well, now I need to start an interview process of asking them so that I can pull them into the evening a little bit. Is it a business dinner? All right, great. I need to figure out who's hosting this business dinner. I need to tailor my conversation to that person, finding out how they want to guide the dinner and then going from there. Is it an intimate moment? All right, I'm gonna guide from a distance on that intimate moment, date night of some sort, anniversary. I wanna make them have a great evening. I want them to have so much fun and I don't really wanna be a part of their memory. I wanna be making a memory with them without being intimately involved in their experience. I don't wanna become a play-by-play -play server in that case for sure. And last note, it's Saturday night. They waited a long time for their table. They look really antsy. They are kind of hangry, get some food in front of them, a bread basket, whatever, get a drink order. Maybe they came to the table with drinks. If they did, then you can move right on into making sure they're comfortable. All right, and that really boils down to the first 30 seconds. In that first 30 seconds, you have hopefully established yourself as their guide for the evening. You have given them a beginning plan. They've relaxed, taken that deep breath, and you can just see them visibly go, Awesome. Somebody's going to take care of me tonight. And then the last thing that's happened is they have virtually taken out their wallet and set it on the table where you can't sit, see it. And they've opened it up and they said, what are we going to spend tonight? 
And by this methodology, you have made sure they spend exactly their budget or a little more for the evening. And that's good for everybody involved. So I thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I hope that you find these comments valuable and that um, you'll be able to listen to this again at some point and that you'll join us next, uh, not next Wednesday or Tuesday, the Tuesday after that, that would make it the uh, 12th, Tuesday the 12th of May, we'll be covering the adventure of the wines by the glass scenario. Um, any, any questions before we go? This is our great opportunity to ask them. And if not, not a problem. You know, it's all pretty straightforward stuff. Yes, the 19th, Emlyn. Thank you very much, Emlyn. Uh, I appreciate that. My LinkedIn pal. I can't add while I'm on uh, webinars, apparently. Yes, 14 days, not, not seven, the 19th. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day. I look forward to uh, meeting you this way in a little while.